Hello and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Um, unfortunately, we can't run. The way is the footworks, that's the only thing we can really do. They have something under your. No, unless you can. Nope, not enough movement. Okay, both for sure not. Of course, all of a sudden, everyone is out of the. Wait for that. Put here, take a potion and shoot him. Can I somehow skip their animation? No, because this takes so long. Great, that's fine. This is still fine. We can do a lot. Scorching ray on him. Sure. One on him. God damn it, really. Can you stand in such way to use it? Path is interrupted. God damn it. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, I'll hit some him. This is okay, this is okay, this is okay. And with bonus action... Can use portion of speed, which will give us more movement. It's okay. Listen. meters is too little. Yeah. Oh, she is still alive. Somehow. Oh, it hit her? Why? Not enough movement. Okay. That. 
should have moved away. What the hell? Was this one active? Not yet. Okay, let's try this. That was enough. Great. And with this. No, I think that's all. Okay, wait. Can go like this and like this. And hit him. It was worth a try. What the hell? Give it some time. <laughs> Not from here. No, we don't need that. Okay. Don't kill her. <laughs> that was brutal. He's not at the end. Swift as my feet can carry me. Okay, he's over here. Can I pick another one? <laughs> oh. Okay, there's one, two, three, four of them left. to start shooting and maybe move away Do you have any potions? 
Oh, the action would be great as well. Okay. Can you shoot? No. Okay, that's great. Oh, I should have used it here. Help him up. It heals me also. <laughs> How many critical hits he gets? He gets the answer is all of them. This bard is a killer, and it, that does not bode well for our. <laughs> it doesn't bode well for the whole campaign if the bard is the killer machine. Um, for now. No, no, no. Of course, no, no, because you have to... Got to keep moving. Take you... Before my time. Okay, can we do first? Yes, we can. Great. You won't want to talk to us anyway. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Oh. Do, uh, do you have anything of value? Towering magic. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, and um, let's talk to this over cab. Wait, save. Mother gone. Hungry. I have a camp. You're welcome there. New home? Maybe. He runs away. Only time will tell if he'll reappear. Poor creature. I hope we can follow my scent to camp. 
Okay, let's go this way since I know I killed most of goblins over here. And by the way, I know I need to give you some of my stuff. I'll give you this potion. If I give you some of the potions of healing. of the ring, crushes ring, movement speed plus three. I could use some. Mm -hmm, this, no, all of you have rings. Whoever joined when the virtues they end their rage, they gain hit points here yeah, and no one uses rage in our team. Wait, what's that? Um, Medium armor, medium armor. You can use medium armor, so you get those, and you will get those. Okay. Safe again. Yeah, it just occurs to me how little with explored of their camp. Come on. to relate to. Oh. Good job. Hmm. And the locked chesty. Great axe plus one. Okay, give it to her. Archman, gold, silver, skull of bone chill, and back. Okay. Let's see you. Well, it's better. It's definitely better. But yeah, two handed. So there you go. I'll set it again. cover as well. I really missed a lot. Don't I? Oh, 
swift as my feet can carry me. This. Oh no, this one, this one. Saving. Oh, thanks. A trap. Someone doesn't like visitors. Call up Sparrow. you please well, open this chest? A crooked touch. Thank you. Glowing shield. That will be for you. Whatever comes, I'm ready. Loving protection wounds per short rest. If you're below 50% hit points and take damage, you gain 8 temporary hit points. Uh -huh, that's better. I'm not using heroism anyway. Okay, yes, let's move, let's go up here. I'll catch a break. We are out of short rests. I'm out of this one. Where does that lead to? Okay, let's check it out. Just a hand axe. No, and skirt. All of accuracy. Thank you. Looks like the boom's got the better of them. Hmm. They're practically unconscious. Great. So we can try. Oh, what big pig's head? Oh, sure. So I'll save and let's start the new Kentridge destination. I was in the middle of shooting at him. really was. And I'm sad that it wasn't very really nice. Hmm. Okay, hit him. I am fury. I am death. Oh, I should have used that. Okay, give yourself another one. Prepare. start doing weird things like Reese. Which means we need to run. Save her. Damn it. Uh. 
cannot move. You can heal yourself. Wait, what do you mean you have not enough, not enough movement to shoot him? I swear I don't understand how this is calculated. Hit him. Or at least try. Use the potion. Although it feels like waste on her. down from ledge is very loud. What's inside? Swift as my feet can carry me. Okay, let's put our camp over here, I guess. Because why not? What's been happening today? Okay. Let's put away our supplies. Oh, Gail. Oh, bro. Need something to eat. Um, nope, not all. Like this. Uh, supplies. Supplies. Now, if you would mind, please equip. Do we have anything to equip on you? Speedy reply. I know I'm not proficient with it. It's for you. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. 
Go on, we're among friends. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. Okay, let's give up on Gale. I have no way to stand beside Mistra. Mm. Bold. Few would dare to reduce a goddess to muse. I am, after all, the villain of the tale. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. How exactly did you try to cross those boundaries? I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. Yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. Fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms, until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book, a netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? So, what was the answer to the question? The answer was to try. And the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver. As you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring at the corridors of a dread Bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weed pulses. Its teeth. Its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part. 
part of you. And gods is it ever hungry. How are you still alive? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Go on. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'll say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, and a level a city the size of Waterdeep. Is there anything we can do? We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. I care too much about you to abandon you now. We travel on together. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. <laughs> From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now. Even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Okay, but is there anyone else who is willing to talk? Well... Damn it all to the hells. We left Joaquin's rest to burn, <laughs> and Grand Duke Ravenguard to burn along with it. Shit. Shit. Shit! Should we go back? The inn has long burned to the ground. <laughs> We'd more easily pull a rainbow from the sky. You need to understand. Duke Ravenguard is my father. Good to know. Um, well, I'm sorry. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because... Our relation was no matter of pride, not least for him. I was close to my father once, until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. Hells, he may have made me an exile, but my heart aches to think we abandoned him to the flames. No, this can't be his end. Fathers vanquished dragon cultists and assassins alike with his own bastard sword. A raven guard is not ruined by fire nor blood. A raven guard survives. There is, but I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. If your father's still out there, we'll find him. Courage and confidence. You would have made a fine daughter to my father. Not with Me. that face. Well, I've never been able to escape my father's name, try as I might. When I look into a mirror, I see two faces. I see the Blade of Frontiers, a man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And I see Will Ravenguard, a memory of a memory, a man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the Blade, not the shadow he left behind. What is it like, being the son of the Grand Duke? Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Father's the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. 
He made a name for himself among the Flaming Fist. Brave as Baldurin, stubborn as a deep rofe. Daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with Father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. Courtly dance? I would love to see a demonstration. <clears throat> It's been a badger's age since I've twinkled my toes. A drunk ogre could put on a better show. You dance like a drunk ogre? That sounds hilarious! Come on! <laughs> well, give it some time. Develop a bond and maybe I'll show you a move or two. I promise, Clumsy Oaf is well within my repertoire. He wasn't there with us. Um, tell me, how did you come to be the blood of frontiers? My father once said, One does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. After my exile, I was hunting near the Cloakwood. I heard a child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. What act could be finer than saving a life? You must have felt proud. Proud? No. Angry. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. And it's nice to meet someone of your talents. Having a worm wriggling in my skull didn't instill much confidence in the days ahead. With you as my ally. The future looks a little less daunting. Hmm, I noticed your stone eye. Did you lose it in battle? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. By all means. Anything more we should discuss? What do you think of the illicit potential the Dream Visitor spoke of? I think that unknowable powers come with unknowable consequences. I can't say I'm not curious. But once you take an illicit by the talon, there's no telling how deep into the abyss it might drag you. We face untold dangers, well, shouldn't we seize every possible advantage? I really hate doing that. Oh, wait. Oh, I have advantage. Yes, I had disadvantage for that. So I pulled a friend. I won't try to persuade him, he doesn't want it, it's okay. I appreciate where you're coming from. Truly, I do. But these parasites are quite literally illithid weapons of war. And I'm not so certain they won't be turned against us upon consuming them. What do you make of Raphael even though you weren't there? to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and the moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? With the right teacher? Yes. What are your thoughts on the devil, Will? Refuse him. 
no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. Don't worry, I have no interest in his deal. That's because you still have hope. Yeah. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure. But the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. That's true, that's why I don't trust him. I don't understand why he become red? What do we see? I don't know. Oakfather's blessings to you. Thanks. Um I have to ask, how do you know so much about the parasite? I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Perhaps, but we'll need to get closer before I can put my theory into practice. Put it from your mind for now. Once we near the curse, then there will be more to be said. There are few things that are too strong for me. And cast those regrets aside. You did not get caught up in the moment. You seized it. In other circumstances, I would have done the same. You would have done the same? Perhaps. But best to not dwell on nights past. There are plenty more yet to come. How are you flying out here at the camp? With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. With such stimulating okay. it's company? It's the same, just the question. <laughs> Never well, better. Why you went with Arden? You thought he might find his road to Moonrise? Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberration. But in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aridin and his band. We didn't even get close. Hmm, okay. Why are you here? Go weave. Break a leaf. Soon as breath. I? Heading out for a forage, you need something. You recognize the names. Herbs known to relieve the symptoms of a hangover. Planning a heavy night? An early morning. Road stretching before us yet. I want my people to enjoy themselves tonight. Then I want them out of bed and moving by dawn. Okay, so the tieflings. Do roots while we walk. <laughs> I'm not heartless. So the tieflings are going with us. As is what I understand. Wait, I need to check something. destroy this? No, can we jump through? No, so we just... Hmm. I wonder. Lazo, we haven't talked a while for a while. The Githyanki people have a word for men like the Blade of Frontiers. Shalak, roughly translated. Idealist do-gooder, or better yet, benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset. His pursuit of valor, not so much. Okay. So, we're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already.
Hello, can we talk or not? I can feel you. Really though, can we talk? Okay, give me a moment. What's the story? Mm, so, how did you end up fighting the in the blood war? Trust me, I'll tell you all about it after we take care of the goons on my tail. Okay. <sighs> in your expert opinion, what's the best way to kill a devil? Depends on the type. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. What they don't love is getting their bombs lobbed right back in their faces. Demons, on the other hand, every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever think you've got them typed out. Sharp instincts, sharp weapons, and a knack for improvisation. That's the only way to survive them. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Hmm. Um, so about our tadpole powers. You really did it, huh? Not worried about adding more illithid into the mix? Well, what can I say? You look fine, smell fine, seem fine. If you got a little boost from the tadpole, who am I to begrudge you? In fact... Got any going spare? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. If I did, would you accept it? You know... I think I would. Bit surprising, but I'm... Starting to see the silver lining of this whole parasite situation. I do, and it's all yours. Thanks, soldier. I'll use it well. Promise. Wait, but I believe there's mm -hmm. something else we can talk about. Um, about those puzzles. What do you know about the city of Eltral falling into Avernus? It wasn't all that long ago. I never knew the whole of how and why, but I remember the devil slavering with delight. I should have looked after the Elterans more. Gone out of my way to make sure they were all right. The long and short of it was, I didn't want to risk my neck. I let them get on with the nightmare, same as I had to. But Avernus is no place for decent folk. I'm glad they got out. So glad. Hmm. This isn't where I thought I would end up. How about you? <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that Nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still, with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you? Hmm. So much has happened. I can barely remember what life was like before the abduction. Lucky you. Sometimes I think I'd be better off indulging in a bit of light oblivion. Well, you may as well make some good memories mixed in with the body horror, huh? Lady of Sorrows guide us. Did you want something? Fine. What's on your mind? What do you think about what happened to the Gru Druid Grove? I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. How are you holding up? Don't be so modest. I can't remember the last time I met someone like you. Perhaps I never did. And never will again. Okay, I think the only one left is Crouch. Where are you? There you are. It's still effective, it's still effective. Hope you're keeping well, friend. Oh, I am. You're such a good friend. Oh, 
Okay, and I think that's all of them. I mean, there's still withers here. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? I just wanted to chat with you, but apparently... Not to be rude, but what are you? There are many answers to that question. None are important. Hmm. Skatos aren't supposed to be able to talk? Correct. Hmm. Are you going to explain further? No. Okay, I... What the hell? I won't attack withers. I'm not a suicidal. I'm not suicidal. Uh, yes, I want to make a long rest. Hell's fire. She's coming. And you know what happens when you're naughty. Gods damn it. Anyone but her. Who in the nine hells are you? Well, you absolute stinker. You kept me a secret. Hmm. Time to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron. The fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak. Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria, pet. Trust me on this. Give him what I needed. You better not lay a damn finger on Karak. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. Can we help him? have you done the promise broken a price paid you know the terms can we kill her get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even i can't undo yeah you're not the now <laughs> let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade Karlak, keep an eye on him would you i'll be keeping mine on you. Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta ta. Can we kill her? Well, she might be powerful, but she knows not as powerful as Mistra. I'll be honest, soldier, I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. Hmm. 
You can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pets tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. Mm, why are they all so... Mm. Really, I'm... Why? Oh, you're lucky she didn't take your soul when she came. I count my lucky stars for it, but I reckon luck is on holiday. I'm only alive because my patron still has use for me. It's Mizora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast Eldritch Blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call Hell Beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. What are the terms of your pact? I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this, the moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Okay. Even in such fraught times as these, there's peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. Makes the while away many hours just like these with my companion. I'm far comfier surrounds. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. <laughs> are you are we talking about your cat? Geron's lost nose. No! Tara is not any cat. She's a Tressum. And given your confusion, I'm guessing you've never met one. They're brilliant creatures. Fine company for any self-respecting wizard. She'd be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The saviour of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition. Lock myself in my tower for an entire year. Just inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement. Her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. She has a good heart. She'd recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. You must be very smart to have done all that. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home, besides. She was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. Bad luck on that front. I'm actually a nymph in disguise. Huh. <laughs> Very funny. But as we all know, nymphs are sticklers when it comes to their bathing routines. You, my friend, haven't been near a fresh spring in a ten-day or more. Not that I don't appreciate your... musk. I actually rather like it. 
Well, this seems as good a time as any for me to stop babbling on. Don't stop now. What else do you like about me? Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Many things, I assure you. But a conversation better saved for another time. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... excitement may tip it over the edge. So to speak. Go. Enjoy your evening. Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. And mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. Does he have any... Okay, I think this is how I can give him the magical items. Let's see if this will work tomorrow. Do this. Mm -hmm. The sword, the sorrow. Anything else? Yes. I think that will be out. Oh, those also. Um, All's well that ends. It's not as bad as it could have. Okay, let's see. I think that's all. That looks like a ring. I refuse to believe otherwise. This is gonna be it for today, so for now, thank you very much. Still, and see you soon. Bye!